Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and April is National Poetry Month. I am so excited because All About Canadian Books is having its first poetry reading, and I have three very talented Canadian poets with me today. And let's bring them in here. Okay, so I have Halle Gattery. Nice to see you, Halle. I have Jake Byrne. Hi, Jake. <laughs> and I have Melanie Montessoros. Hi, Melanie. Thank you so much to everyone. I am thrilled to have you as guests. And for our viewers, what I've asked our poets to do is read any poem of their choice. But before they read, I was hoping that they could give us an explanation of what inspired them to write it. So first up, we have Jake Byrne. Jake Byrne is a writer based in Tacaronto. Their poem, Parallel Volumes, won CV2's Foster Prize for Poetry in 2019, and their debut book of poems, Celebrate Pride with Lockheed Martin, published by Walsack and Wynne, is available now wherever books of Canadian poetry are sold. Jake, I'm going to give you the floor right now. Thanks so much, Crystal, for having me. Um, so by the time you're watching this, the book will be available. There's still a couple weeks, but um, I am going to read a poem from that collection today. This poem is called The Sun Has Never Looked So Large. Um, my inspiration. This is one of those like reportage poems where you just kind of like recount an afternoon. But in working on Celebrate Pride with Lockheed Martin, I began with this, this concept of um, examining like gay culture and its ties to the military. But working with Liz Howard, um, who many people listening to this will be familiar with, she really encouraged me to kind of, I was, I write a lot of travel poetry. I find travel very inspiring. Um, I've, I've been lucky enough to be able to afford it. Like that's, you know, it's, it's, and so I was, I was approaching it like, well, it's kind of an inherently privileged genre. It's, it's kind of a weird genre of poems to focus on. And so I was trying to like hide that away, sand off the edges. Whereas Liz kind of pushed me to actually lean into the ugliness at the heart of consumption. And so this book became kind of a meditation on consumption, luxury, um, and and how that fits into or or, or the societies that we we access that through and what that costs um, in the modern era. And so this poem um, is about an orgy I attended uh, after my sister's wedding. Um, and uh, I'm gonna read it for you now. This is The Sun Has Never Looked So Large. I just did monogamy at the sex party. I only had sex with two people in four hours. The sun on the train blinded me. I looked right at it. There was a crescent within its light. Now I see nothing. Richard's dick, his beautiful, beautiful dick. He was very concerned with, apologetic about not coming, but I too am on SSRI. He was so worried that I could have had anyone at the sex party that I wanted. He did not notice I had not chosen anyone else I could have had. And what was most significant in all of it? The high horse chestnuts, dangling anons, I mean, spanning eons, I mean, spinning irons. I was, I mean, the most significant thing was the spilled Maltesers in the vending machine on the train platform on my way home. 
an explosion of brown globules or spheres, an explosion that didn't move, suspended or preserved in air. My mind returns often to the Maltesers. My mind orbits the Maltesers suspended in the air, like so many moons orbiting a large, large ball of swirling gas that is not on fire. I swear the sun has never looked so large. The sun now setting over empire. Thank you. Wow, Jake, what a way to kick off the first All About Canadian Books poetry reading. <laughs> wow. I figured I might as well. I might as well go bigger, go home, you know? <laughs> you, well, you certainly did. I am speechless. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Next up, we have Holly Gattery. Halle is a multi-genre writer living in rural Ontario on Anishinaabe land. Fuse, her memoir of mixed race identity and mental illness, was published by Guernica Editions Maryland Imprint in 2021. Her debut collection of poetry, Rebellion Box, is due out with Radiant Press this month. And Halle, is it out already? And Halle's short fiction collection, Widow Fantasies, is scheduled for release with Gordon Hill Press, Hill Press. 2024. There she is. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Um, it's it's going to be out in a few days, a couple of days. I think the 14th is when it's scheduled. So soon, soon. Um, and I'm excited. Um, and I'm excited to uh, share this poem with you. Thank you so much for inviting me, Crystal. Thank you, everybody else. I, um, I'm really honored to be in this space with you talented people. So thank you. Um, the poem I'm going to be reading, I, I just kind of, it's the first poem in my collection. It was an easy pick. I've never read it out loud before. And it kind of reflects what I'm going through right now because um, it's about um, aging and uh, kind of sliding into invisibility um, in the eyes of the audience you're used to playing for. So um, this, uh, and it's interesting, I just I just turned 42, I'm not precious about my, you know, sharing my age, I could care less. Um, but I, it's, this, this poem is called Postcard Santa Maria. And it um, takes place when I went to Cuba uh, a few a few years ago. So this was, you know, before my forties even. And and uh, I was sitting next to a girl and um, who was in her teens and still very much like she was a teenager. But like I'm looking at her thinking she's a baby, right? She's a baby, but she was just being um, just aggressively hit on constantly. And um, her mom was right there. Um, and, you know, I I did my usual thing, which is lose my shit on people who weren't taking a hint just to leave this person alone. Um, but, you know, I, I started reflecting when I got home about how I was also really, really like conflicted because on one hand I was like, oh my gosh, it's really nice to be invisible. Like it's it's lovely not to have to put up with this level of garbage anymore. Um, and it's just invisible from a certain population, like a certain population of people, a certain kind of person, you know, it's not everybody, but that's the attention that, you know, especially as, you know, I think young women were used to getting from a certain really aggressive um, type of man specifically. Um, so I, I, you know, I was dealing with that, but I also felt like really hurt, <laughs> like, ah, the creeps aren't noticing me anymore. Like, and it was really, just really, well, why should, like, isn't that a good thing? So this poem kind of um, deals with, you know, what I was feeling and um, all that fun stuff. So it's it's not a very long poem um, and I'm going to read it to you. And uh, yeah, thank you again for having me. Across the pool, the boy's plum dark eyes gulp refracted light all over the girl beside me. Stretched to indifference, her thighs are perfectly fattened calves, 
flicking flies, their frisson of velvet shimmers made slow by the strugged heat, made soft. I'm not that girl anymore. I have the conviction of dust and the cervix of a 15 year old, my doctor says, not bad for four kids. So I believe in anything so I can believe at all. The boy is coming, snakes sway in his hips, a roving satellite over breast and breath and brown. His air compressed confidence warps the children's laughter, baffles the sun so even the girl looks up. I'm not that girl anymore. Her curling toes, her eyes impossible behind shades, her weight inside me shifting, my embarrassment of cliches scattered like nail clippings. Thank you. Oh, Holly, yay. Oh, that was beautiful. And as a woman who is 53, if I may say, I can totally relate, but I think you are gorgeous. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Oh my goodness. Okay. And our last poet, Melanie. So Melanie Monaceros is currently based in Treaty One territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. M. Patchwork Monaceros is a poet and interdisciplinary artist exploring polysensory creation and somatic grief. Engaging poetry, memoir, textiles, and film, their work considers a collection of crip, queer plus crip, consciousness by connecting to marvelous bodies living with complexity as sick or disabled. Melanie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for the intro and thank you for having me and Holly and Jake. Oh, like Monday morning, delicious poetry, a little bit of gay, a little bit of feminism. Yeah, thank you. The day is good. <laughs> the week is ready. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is so lovely. This is my first like associated reading with my first book. So thank you for being part of that. Um, I had a couple of different ones that I was kind of like playing with. I was like, oh, not quite sure. Um, so this month is obviously it's poetry month. It's also autism awareness month. Um, and I am very much uh, an autistic poet. Didn't know when I was writing some of these poems, but I know that now. Um, <laughs> And so um, I wanted to, I write a lot about what my body feels like with my different disabilities and chronic illnesses and things. Um, and the way I used to kind of describe pain or feelings and stuff to like doctors and neurotypical folks was very like poetic, we'll say. Um, and very like, you know, very much into the cells of my things. And so I kind of wanted to share something a little bit about, um, access and bodies and uh, things like that. So um, I'm gonna read this one called uh, Routine. Routine. Wake up. Sore. Groggy. Headache. Play bedspread hide and seek with the cats. Open the door for the dog, but keep the cats inside. Let the dog out, distract the cats, open the cans, Shake the kibble, sneak away, let the dog back in, water for everyone. Ciprolex and Relputrin, and Zyprexa and Paxil, Abilify to relieve the drowsiness from the night drugs, um, Adderall to counteract the sedatives for the pain somnia, streetcar, steps, no seats. Can I sit down? Stank eye and sit where? Squeezing back tears, cramp, spasm, stab, pinch, wince. <sighs> Open the front door. Sore, groggy, headache, hungry, backache, foot pain, joint swelling, walk the dog. Don't let the cats out, front door. Distract the cats, shake the treats. Chicken liver pate, let the dog out. Homework, call the dog back in, Weave the feather, wave the feather dangler, hairball, call the dog back in again. Trazodone and Seroquel and Gabapentin and Sesame 
and ibuprofen and weed and Percocet and T3s and naproxen and a heating pad and a foam roller and Acuball and orthotic insoles um, and a wrist brace and ice pack and muscle rub and hot water and child's pose for sleep, for anxiety, for depression, for pain. Let the dog back in. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Melanie, wow. <laughs> and for our viewers, before um, we started the reading kind of off air, we were having a chat about poetry and I was sharing with with the guests just how I was kind of intimidated by poetry. And I would just like to say such a huge thank you to this talented group of poets because you really do feel the emotion of what you're talking about and just express. I just feel like I've been exposed to a whole other level this morning. And I am so grateful to all of you and in awe of your talent. And oh no, I'm gonna get, getting a little emotional. <laughs> Great as I start crying. <laughs> but oh, I, oh no. <laughs> but oh, like. <laughs> That just means we did our job. You did. Oh my God. And I, the more I could really start crying. <laughs> oh, thank you. I just, oh, I'm so, oh, now I'm going to start. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Crystal, thank, thank you. you so much for having us. Oh, um, thank you. This has been the poetry edition of All About Canadian Books, hosted by Crystal Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take it from there. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I'm a big thank you to Holly Gattery, Jake Byrne, and Melly, Melanie Monoceros. I will put links down below in the description box so you can find all their websites, get all of the information about them because they are so incredibly talented, and also to put, purchase a copy of their books. This was just a small taste of what they've got to offer. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Jake, for helping me out there. <laughs> no worries. Bye, everyone. Thank you. And be sure to subscribe to All About Canadian Books and check out my other author interviews. Bye. Thank you.